Hello everybody and welcome to the video on aldol condensation mechanism. I had made this video uh, a couple months ago and I actually just now went back and looked at it and there were some videos so I'm remaking it. So I guess I made the other video a couple months ago so I'm remaking this video now on the aldol condensation mechanism. Um, this is a pretty widely used reaction and it's a very common reaction that is typically taught in organic chemistry too. So it's very important to learn the mechanism because it will undoubtedly show up in OCHEM 2 and on an exam or whatever. It's just a very important mechanism because it allows us to make carbon-carbon bonds. And so this is our reaction equation. You start with an aldehyde or ketone and you react it with a base which is typically sodium hydroxide and you can do one of two things you can either heat this reaction up to get our desired product or you can do something else which I'll explain uh, later and this is our product it's called an alpha beta unsaturated ketone and so this is the alpha carbon here and this is the beta carbon here and then of course it's a double bond so that's why it's called unsaturated so alpha beta unsaturated ketone or aldehyde depending on of course what the starting materials are okay so let's see how this mechanism works and hopefully as we go through this I can point out some things that will benefit you more so than just with this mechanism I can say well why does this step occur and then you can take that and apply it to many other reactions as well Okay, so we have acetone, just our generic ketone, and then we also have sodium hydroxide. And we have to think about what can happen. Well, for one, we, what we should know about hydroxide is that one, it's basic and it's also nucleophilic. And then with ketones, or really any carbonyl compounds in general, they are electrophilic at the carbonyl carbon, nucleophilic at the carbonyl oxygen, slightly nucleophilic and they are also acidic at the alpha hydrogens so we have six here three here and then three over here and we kind of have to judge what can happen and so one thing that can happen is this the sodium or the hydroxide can attack here it can act as a nucleophile attack this and is would be a nucleophilic addition it would be adding to that it would be adding to the carbonyl and it would give us this it would give us what's known as a uh, a hydrate hydrates are not stable compounds uh, you can consider these I mean they are in equilibrium obviously when you put them together this would just very easily collapse back and kick this out because this is just not a stable compound and let me actually get rid of this and show you what would actually happen. So we kind of got rid of that one possibility of the nucleophilic addition and our other possibility would just be a simple acid base reaction where the alpha hydrogen is deprotonated by hydroxide. And you should know that acid base reactions will most often happen first before any other type of reaction no matter what kind of reaction it is because acid base reactions are a simple trans uh, transferring of a proton and that is if it's a decent acid and a decent base it'll pretty much be a very favorable favorable reaction a very low transition state energy of activation so our product would be or our product of this step would be this we would just deprotonate we'd have a negative charge in its place and of course we would have sodium counter ion and this is called an enolate and we can see why and we can also see why this forms this has a resonance structure where if this lone pair goes here in this pi bond uh, the pi bond electrons go up into oxygen our resonance structure is this and so this is a we have the double bond here and then the negative charge here so ene for the double bond and eight for the negative charge and this is why this even occurs because these electrons here 
that are generated, I guess not really generated, but released from the bond with the hydrogen are able to be delocalized throughout this pi system, this molecular orbital system. And of course delocalized electrons are happy electrons and so this would be somewhat lower in energy and this could form because of that, because of these resonance structures. And now we have to think about what can happen next. Well, the only things we really have are sodium hydroxide and acetone. And if sodium hydroxide, say, that's going to add here at, at this carbon, that's kind of a bad arrow, but say it adds at this carbon, the only thing that could happen is that could go there, and that's just not going to happen. There's too many electrons in one spot. You'd have a negative charge next to another fully negative charge. Um, and of course, physics would tell us that that would be fairly unfavorable. And so, of course, the other, th only other thing we have is another molecule of acetone. And if we bring that in, we can say, well, we already know this is the carbonyl carbon is electrophilic because it's delta positive and delta minus. So the, of course, the dipole is like that. And then we also know we already have our nucleophile here with the enolate. And of course, they're nucleophile only here, really. Um, we can say they're nucleophile at the oxygen, but they're not very, just because the resulting product would be very unstable. Okay, so what happens is that if this comes down, the, one of the lone pairs comes down, and then the pi bond would move out to attack the carbonyl carbon. And at the same time, that pi bond would break and go back to oxygen. And of course, it doesn't matter if we show this resonance form or this resonance form, um, because chemically they have to be equivalent due to the rules of resonance. But we can show it like that. And then we can sh envision our product as being this. We have our two methyl groups, and then we have O minus and sodium plus as our counter ion. Okay, so what can happen now? Well, if we think about this molecule in relation to our final product, what were our desired product, we can see that this kind of half of the molecule, we could say, is almost, I mean, it's really identical to this. So we really don't want to do anything to this side of this molecule because we want it to be like that. And so that's going to lead us to say, well, let's do it something to the other side. And so what we could do, of course, we have only acetone and sodium hydroxide. And of course, you should know that almost any time you have sodium hydroxide, it's aqueous. And that means it's in a water-based solution. And so, of course, this alkoxide, this negatively charged oxygen, could take a proton. That's kind of a slanted arrow, but that's okay. Could take a hydrogen from water and give us an alcohol. Again, acid-base reaction. Most steps in a mechanism will be proton transfers. That should become quite apparent to you in your studies of organic chemistry. Okay, so we have OH now. And this is actually called an aldol. This is why this uh, reaction is called an aldol condensation. If you can really envision this, maybe instead of being CH3 as being an H, you can think of this as being an aldehyde. And then, of course, we have an alcohol. So we'd have ald for aldehyde and all for alcohol. It's not, I mean, it's a ketone. It's obviously not an aldehyde, but uh, you can take that up with IUPAC, I guess. Um, so it doesn't really matter. But oops, this is our aldol. This is why it's called an aldol condensation. Okay. And so once we've done that, we can think about what's going to happen next. Um, and it kind of, this is where you get to the point where you kind of have to start thinking about, well, how can I form the final product from here? Kind of in conjunction with, well, what can happen with this molecule under present conditions? You have to kind of keep both of those in mind. And as you're starting out, you should really not be concerned with the former question. You shouldn't be concerned with how can I yield the product. You should be more concerned with 